we'll go to the next question and ask JP. Next question is Mauktik from software sector. Yes, Mauktik. Namaste, sir. Very big fan here. My question is civil services in 2022 join worth it because at least it will take three to four years of our lives but salaries are pretty low political interference corruption uh, slow is it worth joining tw uh, civil services in 2022 second question is mimalni hyderabad to kalvatam yela thank you thank you mokti this question is, in this day and age, is it worthwhile to join civil services? The salaries are not good enough compared to the market for the same ability. And can we actually do something significant? You know, all over the world, with very few exceptions, as a general rule for talented people, the market pays better than the government. Singapore is one exception. In India, there's a peculiarity. The lower level employees of government, they are paid four to five times the market value for the same work, you're a driver, you're a clerk, you're something else. In government versus in private sector, in the government, they pay three to four times. But for the senior people, talented people, for whom there is a market demand, in whatever way the sector, maybe you are a great lawyer, you want to become a judge or a prosecutor. Maybe you are a very competent technocrat. There's a tremendous market value, but you want to join government. Maybe you're a great entrepreneur. You can lead a whole a production machine, but you want to enter politics. Whether you're a politician or a bureaucrat, civil servant at the senior level, or a judge or a prosecutor, the salaries for your talent are commensurately less than what the market pays. But that is true in most of the world. But why do people join government? They join government not for salaries, while we must pay adequately at least to have a, a life of dignity and some reasonable comfort so that they're productive. You cannot pay them salaries commensurate with the market. We can give them a life of dignity. We can give them respect. But in return, the satisfaction of improving the public domain, the collective good, because I have passion to do something, you have passion to do something, you have ideas, you have expertise, you have ability, you have talent, and you're using that talent for the larger public good. And that's what attracts the finest people into public service, whether civil service or politics, or judiciary, or prosecution. Now, once you view it that way, even today, it's worthwhile to join the civil services. True, during the British time, the ICS was the highest paid service in the world. Their salaries, relative to the salaries in the world at that time, were the highest. But that was colonial India. And therefore, every middle class family in Britain, their dream is to send their child to India to become an ICS officer. But today, that cannot be the motivation. Nor should it be naked power. It should be the opportunity to make a difference. Even today, you can make a difference. You can improve the lot. You can use your innovation, your talent, your skill to make things better. And with better technology, it's happening even better. There are a lot of people in many organizations in the public sector in India who are taking a big salary cut for the satisfaction of improving the lot of the fellow human beings in this country and achieving significant results. Not everybody is doing that. Many people are competing because there's a lot of power and hoping that there are perks. And of course, in a country like India, sadly, the temptation to take bribes and enrich themselves at the cost of the people. That should not be the motivation. But we must also remember, a civil servant is not the lord and master. Because we are in a democratic country. A civil servant cannot make policy. That's ultimately by the representatives of the people who are elected by the people. A civil servant cannot make laws. The constitution and laws are the guide to civil servants. But a civil servant can shape, help shape policy. Help make better legislation. And most important of all, design systems and mechanisms to ensure that the laws are enforced fairly. The policies are implemented justly and efficiently. A lot of innovation, a lot of improved management, a lot of sensitivity, accountability, responsiveness are possible depending on the qualities of leadership of a civil servant. Therefore, if you have that passion, not seeking naked power, not doing it because of the respect that you get as a civil servant. In India, we give exaggerated respect to our officers in government. 
that is a feudal trait. It's an important job, but it's like any other job. You must give them due respect, but not put them on a pedestal. That's not what modern democracies are about. So without those notions of feudalism, if you actually want to make a difference, contribute to collective good, and if you have the talent, and if you have the skills to lead, because there are many interests, interest groups, stakeholders in government and in society, you must carry them all with you. Reconcile conflicting interests, get the best out of the situation, and show the results ultimately, and make lives better. If you have that skill and passion, I think it's worthwhile to join civil services. And we don't have to make it a lifelong choice. Many of us are fighting for a system whereby the brightest Indians, wherever they have talent, skill and passion, they can join government for a few years whenever they want to, if they are the best in the country, if they can give the best services to the country, best leadership in the country. They must be able to join. And once they feel that they have achieved the task, they must be happily able to go back to their personal lives. In India, we have too rigid a civil service and there's a monopoly of civil servants for all the key jobs. And there's a lifelong tenure of security, irrespective of the competence and performance. And there's no real competition. That's not right. And there's no expertise, domain expertise. A civil servant once recruited, they believe that you can be a banker today, you can be defense secretary tomorrow, education man day after, healthcare the fourth day, industry is the fifth day, it's absurd. This is the age of specialization and domain expertise. So we have to radically change our civil services. So you can join initially and acquire expertise and make a difference. Or you can lend voice to the larger demand for reform so that the finest people can enter parallelly and make a difference and go back, not make it a lifelong thing. It's about transforming rather than acquiring power and retaining power. In many ways, we must make our civil services more efficient, our delivery more effective, more just, more competent. And there is a lot of space for good people of quality in this country. Thank you for your questions. Please offer your comments, your criticism, and raise questions for debate and discussion. And let us spread the message. There's no final truth. We have to keep at it. We have to go by evidence and logic. We have to respond to emerging situations. And we have to understand the global practices and our own past experience. We have to find constructive and creative responses to our challenges. I'm a great believer, and as you believe, that there are rational, practical, acceptable, sensible, affordable solutions to most of our problems. But we must think of them very carefully, based on evidence and logic, with goodwill, without hyperpartisanship, without illogical approach, without excessive emotion or sentiment. And we must adapt the best practices relevant to our conditions. And we must learn from our own past experience, good and bad. I wish you all the very best. Thank you.